Jira, welcome to Social Media Trends on the Weekend Show. My name is Inafita. It's glad to be back, bringing you, taking the discussion from social media to you right in your homes. Okay, so I have three stories, amazing stories, so you don't want to go anywhere. First things first, this week, President Muhammadu Buhari assented to the Deep Offshore Bill. Now, this is a piece of legislation that will mean more money and petrol dollar, more money um, for the federal government and um, petrol dollars to lubricate a wasteful bureaucracy. Now, why, well, you know, this is something to be celebrated and, uh, you know, just uh, let it slide. You know, it shouldn't cause anything on social media. A lot of people are more um, angry at the fact that um, the president had to sign such a landmark bill in a foreign land. Now, we did see pictures of him signing this bill. Now, apparently, his chief of staff took this bill to him in London, leaving the vice president in our country. So people are calling the vice, saying as a vice president and audio VP, that's what people are saying on social media, not me. Let's take a, a look at some of the um, conversations that trailed this story on Twitter, because that is where everything politics really, really happens. Okay, the first one at NG President. Photo, President at M. Buhari and sent in to bill amending deep offshore and inland basin production sharing contract act. Assisted by Chief of Staff Abba Kiari, the amended bill will generate an estimated $500 million in additional revenues for the federal government in 2020 and over $1 billion from 2021. All right. On to the next tweet. Yeah. At Henry Shield, so all those bodylon togs who prevented Igbo people from voting in Lagos during the last presidential election did all that for Abba Kiari to treat their uncle Oshibajo like this. I want to laugh, but I'm not evil. Let's move on to the next slide, please. At Eddie King, VP Oshibajo still enjoys the respect of his office. Abba Kiari humbly takes far to vice president stop demonstrating your ignorance and hate by sowing seed of discord between pmb and his vice take a look at that picture down there attached to this tweet all right to the next slide please at h limited abba Kiari is the most effective chief of staff in nigeria's history unlike in the past where appointment to see the president is cash and carry under obj gej he understood state policies he knew what PMB wanted and he's helping him to accomplish his goals, a great alliance. At Taiwo, Busolami has this to say, this is the man that promised to... Can we take it back to the previous? This is the man that promised to cut government expenditures that Abba Kiari had to travel from Abuja, Nigeria to London, UK to sign a piece of paper. Whereas there is a vice president. Oh, I forgot the VP is on academics matters. And finally, this is supposed to be a conversation between the first lady and the wife of the vice president. This is created by at the mighty angel. He goes, Dolapo supposedly saying, First lady, the way PDP and articulate supporters have been supporting my husband, am I still his wife? Aisha goes, you need to check on Mokri and Yinka Odumaki. Remember they did marriage for my husband a few weeks ago too. And Dalapo says this, okay, let me ask Abba Kiyari. Aisha is supposedly laughing. So basically they're just laughing at the conversation that is happening online. Now I really, really want to add that social media or Twitter is a place where you have a uh, people for the government, you have opposition, and normal Nigerians that just want to speak on matters arising. So it's a mix of everything, and that's why, and that is what, you know, these tweets reflect, and uh, that's what you see here. Moving on to a topic we have been discussing on this show all day, all morning, is the disqualification of our movie, Lion Hearts. I'm saying ah, because if you're proud of this film, which I think you should be, then when you're referring to the film, you should say ours. Okay, so Genevieve Unagi's directorial debut film, Lion Heart, which was submitted, Nigeria's first ever submission to the Academy was disqualified on grounds um, that the movie was not uh, predominantly in a foreign language. Now, this for us could be Igbo, Hausa, Yoruba. And in this film, we did see them speak a uh, a little of Igbo and Hausa, but I guess it just wasn't enough. Now, uh, of course, a lot of Nigerians were not happy about it. And I would definitely say it was a 70-30 a uh, margin in the sense that 70% of Nigerians did not even want to hear what happened. They all just, you know, 
jumped in and were calling for the Oscars next. Meanwhile, the 30% were actually, okay, what could be the problem? Why did this happen? But another person to our surprise that actually, actually, you know, took the conversation to another level is the producer of um, Netflix, When They See Us Now, Ava. Now, Ava took to, you know, her official Twitter handle, and this is what she tweeted, at in the Academy. Can you see that? To at the Academy, you disqualified Nigeria's first ever submission for best international feature because it's in English. But English is the official language of Nigeria. Are you barring this country from ever competing for an Oscar in its official language? Question mark. Now, Geneva Minaji, upon seeing this, had to reply, of course. Let's take a look at her response. Thank you so much at Ava. I am the director of Lion Hat. This movie represents the way we speak as Nigerians. This includes English, which acts as a bridge between the 500 plus languages spoken in our country, thereby making us hashtag one Nigeria. She goes further to say, it's no different from it's no different to how French connects communities in former French colonies. We did not choose who colonized us. As ever, this film, and many like it, is proudly Nigerian. Beautiful words, Geneva Vinaji. You know, she's always very confident, and she has this elegance, even though when she's angry, you know, it just comes off as being elegant. Let's take a look at some of the other reactions following this. At Zulu Moke, there at the Academy, your criteria is valid, but so is our reality. Creating two categories, best foreign film and best international film, is probably best. Filmmakers don't make films for awards, we make films for our audience, which is very, very true. Well, some people actually, because we heard that during the lifestyle segment. At um, Akaebu Bay, my attention has been drawn to the fact that our superb hashtag Lionheart goal has been disallowed. This is a strong football fan. They said it was language yards offside. Let's not argue over FIFA rules, but focus on scoring another hat trick. And this is even the message we should all take home. Let's do it better, you know, so that next time there is no need for disqualification. At Cute Walter, maybe the Oscars shouldn't have changed the category from best foreign, fi foreign language film. If they were calling the category best international feature, then the national origin, not the language, should be the relevant factor. And finally, one more. At um, Aru Biapara, do you know the Oscars' rules are publicly available? The film was submitted into the international feature film category. Within that category, it was disqualified. Lessons should be learned for next time. Film is superb, but someone should have read the rules. And of course, we see him. He added that, you know, a predominantly non-English dialogue track, like I said at the beginning. So basically, rules are rules, right? So you can't really, really, really fault the Oscars. But nobody can tell us that Lion Hat is not that movie because Lion Hat is that movie, right? So let's just enjoy the fact that we put out a good work and um, better luck next time. All right now, so, you know, in life or in Nigeria, the weather is hot. Um, traffic is everywhere, um, <laughs> you know, the hustle and bustle is going on. So a lot of people go to their Instagram or, you know, just social media in general to just look for those uh, comedy skits and just relieve themselves of their realities. Now, we all do like a good comedy skit on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. But sometimes uh, maybe the comedians are not able to pass their message across the way they ought to or the way they <laughs> intended to. This is the case of popular comedian. Sydney Talker. Now he is very, very, he's a fan favorite. A lot of people like him. But his recent um, skit featuring another Instagram comedian, Crazy Clown, might have just gone sour. Now apparently they wanted it to be a satire, but let's just say the sarcasm didn't go well. Let's take a look at some of the reactions that trailed this new video portraying, well, people are saying that um, he wasn't paying attention and he was rather promoting um, sexual. Um, What's the word? Sexual harassment. All right, let's take a look at the first tweet. At Aduni underscore Achebe, it'll be hypocritical of me to say that Sydney Talker's skit promotes sexual harassment. Same way it'll be absurd to say a movie like King of Boys promotes organized crime. Sometimes it's best to treat things as the items of entertainment that they are, nothing more. At Deola underscore Adereti, there is something called ideology. 
ideology is an unseen weapon, weapon used to impose unseen or normalized power over a subject without him or her knowing this power at work. I think what Sidney Talker is trying to portray here is that concept, all right. At Demi, the creator, how come we're more woke on Twitter? Funny thing is Sidney Talker would post that video on Instagram and you wouldn't see anyone complain, but Twitter is a different case. I beg to differ because I am very, very active on Instagram and we complain about things that are inappropriate too. <laughs> Moving on. At Kenna Ewuru, I've had, I've had it with sensitive Twitter coming here to criticize comedians for their skits. Most of those skits that Sydney Talker does are such as, what did you idiots do in literature class? All right, this is Ikena talking, not me. Moving on to, I think, the very last tweet on this. At Cute Walter, I love Sydney Talker, and I think he's actually very funny. But constantly making the same type of skits, more so sexual, makes it seem like he is out of content. It really wrecks of cloud chasing. I was supposed to play this video, but just because of how sensitive some persons are to it, I couldn't add it. But of course, the video will be added to our, our uploaded version of the social media trends on YouTube. So you can check, go there and watch the video for yourself to see why everyone is complaining. All right. Now, we also know that in social media, in space of social, social media, we, well, talent are discovered every day. It doesn't matter how long you've been practicing, but just when one big influencer comes across your page, then you're everywhere. This is the story of a particular Instagram comedian, Shadi, popularly known as Colin. He goes, his actual name is um, Colin Chuku. Now, Tunde Edno discovered his page on Instagram, saw his work, and decided to put it out there. And now it is everywhere. So I'll be leaving you with one of his many videos as our video of the week. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms at Weekend Show NG. My name is Ina Peters, and you can catch me on Instagram, Ina underscore Peters. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Social Media Trends. The political segment is coming right up, and I'll see you next week. My chain, $2 million. My ring, $3 million. My watch, $6 million. Seven million, US dollar. Dollar. My watch, seven seven million US dollar. Yeah, yeah man, if you saw one mansion money, I'm, I'm using to buy my my dresses. Yeah, yeah man, maybe small boys watch. Young, young, young rich here. Yeah. I'm, I'm short, but my pocket tall. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, you see I'm the money bag, you start. start. Yeah, yeah man, you start boy. Yeah, I get, get vibe, I get we vibe. vibe, I get money past time booty. Don't, Don't use me to compare Dan Gucci because I get money past Dan Gucci.